Okay, what I want to talk about right now are the basic visual components. And the basic visual components are the, the, the components that are found in everything that we see, in all the pictures, both moving and still. Uh, these, components, these components are the building blocks of images. And they're always, always, always present. And it's good to know the components because once you've established them in your production, it'll determine it'll determine a lot of critical decisions that you make, like um, costuming, locations, uh, set design, um, props, lighting. Um, so knowing the visual components will help you in the production, but it'll also it'll also help you tell your story just by knowing how these components build into these smaller theme components build into larger visual elements and again these all these components are perceptual they're not tangible in the way how let's say a car or a cell phone would be they're perceptual in meaning that they're how we perceive them so the first one I want to talk about is space now I'm not talking about, I'm sorry, the first one is space, second one is line and shape, then we have tone, color, movement, rhythm, now space is not what you think, it's not like when someone says, you know, I need my space or their personal space or the space between two people or two physical objects. Nor is it talking about, you know, deep outer space like Star Trek or Star Wars. When we say space, we're referring to three different things um, within the visual space. So the visual space is the, is the, the heading of this, but when, beneath the visual space, there are three different things that we're referring to. We're talking about the space in front of the camera. So let's say you have a camera and it's pointed at your actor. We're talking about that space in front of the camera. We're also talking about the space as it appears on the screen. So the screen being a flat two-dimensional surface. So like right now you're watching this on your computer monitor. Your computer monitor is flat. So we're talking about those types of space. It could be a cell phone. It could be a, a movie screen. It could be um, it could be a television. Okay, it could be anything. A billboard on the street. A magazine. We're also talking about the dimensions of the screen itself, okay? The dimension of the screen itself. Our next component is line and shape. Line is perceptual. Remember, we perceive it in our heads. It doesn't really exist. It only exists in our heads, in our minds. And if you look at the example of the picture next to us, this right picture right here, you see the horizon. There's the ocean, and it, it touches off into the sky off in the distance. Well, the point where the sky meets the ocean forms a line. And now you can see that line. So no, the line doesn't exist, but we perceive that there is one there. Okay? That's line. Now, we say line and shape. Because lines build shapes. And since lines are perceptual, shapes are perceptual. So here we have a basketball. And it looks three-dimensional, right? But we can reduce the, the texture of it and the contrast and reduce it down to a shape, to a line. Okay? Here we have a basketball. And now we have the line, the outline of that basketball, creating a shape. The next thing is tone. Now, tone doesn't refer to the, the upbeatness or downbeat of a scene or a picture or an image. It doesn't refer to the, the uh, is it happy or is it sad. Tone, in this case, refers to the brightness of an object. Okay? We're talking about the grayscale, how far up, how far bright, or how far dark an object is. That's tone. 
The next thing is color. Color is probably one of the most powerful and one of the most complex of the components. Um, it also has some built-in visual stereotypes like people tend to think red means anger or, or mad or danger uh, and it very well can be. It all depends on how you use this component. Um, you can set up your own rules. You can have green meaning whatever emotion and every time it appears on the screen you know you can trigger that emotion in your audience. The next thing is movement. Movement refers to objects on the screen. It refers to the camera and the viewer's eyes. Okay, Objects on the screen like someone walking across the picture plane or walking across the screen. Um, or how about the camera? The camera panning left or panning right or zooming in. And the viewer's eyes, we can move the viewer's eyes across the screen by placing action and objects in various quadrants of the screen. And uh, we'll get into that a little later, but just remember that movements, the movement refers to three different things. Objects on the screen, the camera, as well as the viewer's eyes. The next one is rhythm. And this isn't the type of rhythm that we hear. We're referring to a stationary rhythm, a rhythm within a frame or within a series of pictures. Um, we're also talking about a rhythm in editing and a rhythm of moving objects. So we'll get into more examples of that later on. And that does it for the subcomponents. Now these these components, they're again, they're always there in every photograph, every picture, every image. You can reduce it down to the line. Even this one, you can see the line, the, the, the line between the stage and the backdrop. You can always find tone, colors, you can always find uh, um, all the different, or you can always find the different sub, the different components present in a in a picture. And again, if a director or an artist uses them or not intentionally is one thing. Um, our objective is to bring them into your awareness so that you can identify them, and then once you identify them. You can see how various filmmakers use these components to tell their stories, to enhance the story, to enhance the script, um, to build a scene, to build emotion, to, to pull emotion from an audience. Um, you can see if they adhere to the rules or do they break the rules. Um, do they lean towards one component to tell their story over another one? So all these different elements, all these different styles, you'll be able to identify from with different directors and different films, different scenes, different images, once you get an understanding of the components. And then it's going to be, these components are going to be the building blocks for all the other, uh, the more complex visual aspects that we're going to get into. All right.